going to introduce briefly the Cupid Showcase that Rajika um, visited in Bulgaria. It was a virtual visit, unfortunately, due to COVID. So I will just uh, take you quite briefly through the enterprise and then Rajika will tell us a little bit about her perspective on the experience. So the Cupid project, for those of you who haven't been with us already, is an EU funded project that aims to um, encourage knowledge exchange between bio based businesses um, and successful um, businesses that are interacting in the bio economy across Europe. So through this project, we reach 4000 primary producers and aim to reach 5000 other stakeholders from diverse sectors. And there are 10 different countries involved that you can see um, here on the, the map with 11 showcases. So one of them was in Bulgaria. And this was the business of the young entrepreneur, Viktor Azanov. I say young because he's um, in his 30s and started this business in 2016 with funding from the Bulgarian Rural Development Programme. So the focus is on cucumbers. It's a really large site. It's about uh, five and a half square kilometres, so very big cultivated area um, and all tunnels um, with 11 permanent workers. So contribution to the local economy as well. In terms of where their markets are, um, as you can see, they're really specialized uh, in, in terms of what they're producing. Uh, they supply Sofia, which is a few kilometers away um, from the business location, and the business is located close to the airport. So similar to what we would see um, around Dublin, for example, with horticulture growers located between the airport and the city. It is a private enterprise, so a lot of our Cupid projects have been cooperatives. Um, because of the, the capacity of cooperatives to raise funds for investing in bio-based technologies. But this is a private enterprise um, with strong collaboration with other growers and also research, which has been um, quite important for their innovative approach. So in which way are they innovative? Well, they recycle uh, drainage water and rainwater, not quite as complex um, a system um, as Drajika has described, uh, but nonetheless, it's circular use of water. They are adding value to their vegetable waste. So all that, all the produce that can't go to market um, as well as trimmings to by supplying it to a nearby company for biofertilizers uh, that they then also buy back some of for the, for the enterprise. And in terms of their heating systems, they use waste biomass from sunflower residues with an oxyhydrogen generator. So this is a really innovative technology developed with the Agricultural University in Plovdiv. So I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, but then the other interesting approach that they're taking uh, is to use blockchain for monitoring plant growth and then uh, allowing consumers to trace um, all the stages that the, the plant has been through before it arrives uh, in their in their shopping trolley, basically. Um, so that has implications for satisfying consumer demand. Uh, they don't really see it as a big value addition approach yet, but with um, changing consumer interests in terms of sustainability, uh, they are well situated to uh, provide that information easily to consumers. So the oxyhydrogen generator is specially designed for greenhouse producers. I said it was developed um, in collaboration with the university and uh, Viktor Azanov uh, participated as, as part of the, the pilot implementation, I suppose, um, to help with the development. It's a power to gas technology using solar fuel. So just a little bit about how it works. Um, solar panels on the farm capture the energy, can be stored in a battery pack, um, and they use pulsed electrolysis of water uh, to separate um, hydrogen and oxygen. And this can ensure the efficient use of the biomass pellets, which are from sunflower residues, which is um, a regional biomass. So in terms of the implications for the farm, it's reducing costs, um, emissions and fine particulate matter. And in terms of the region, then it's reducing waste by using that biomass. So 
In terms of innovations, those were the main ones that were showcased during um, the visit that Dražka and I attended in Bulgaria. But to get the producer view on that, um, Dražka, I would like you to um, let me know what you think was relevant for Irish growers from what you saw in that showcase, um, if you think there's anything that was transferable, and if there's any similar challenges in Bulgaria to what you know um, from working here in Ireland. Right, uh, thank you for your question. Um, I would like to say that I think that every uh, grower currently in the whole world is facing the same challenges. And I, and I think that there is no farmer who is not, you know, like having at least some problem. So what I would like to, what I would like to say, like, what I, what I get it as a feedback from that, um, from that seminar, um, is what I already mentioned it in my presentation is trying to be as much possible independent. And then also to try to use as much possible waste, because if you have more waste, it's actually more cost. If you have less waste, it's less cost. So my my personal like think what I saw it, what they have it is this what you also mentioned it, and actually it's usage of the residues of the sunflowers, uh, which they use it then in there. I think the generated oxy oxy oxygen oxyhydrogen uh, generator so i think that's something which is actually very interesting and uh, yes i can see this as a, something that maybe can be implemented here in in ireland also uh, something what i started to see here but maybe we can use it's not maybe connect with them but as we are living here in ireland here is a lot of lot of wind so I think using the, the wind as a, some type of the energy, not just the solar energy, like I think we can get better efficiency from the wind maybe than, than from, the, from the solar, but that's just my personal opinion. So I think if we can use as much as possible available energy, which is basically kind of free for everybody, I think that can help us to be more independent uh, to this situation, what is happening in the world, such as, uh, for instance, I was mentioning the gas, which is kind of the, the biggest currently problem in the, in the world. So if we could sort that out, that could be a big beneficiary to, to everybody. Great. I hope so, I answer you on, the, on your yeah, question. Yeah, thanks, Dražika. Yeah. And Michael Mairead, um, I'd be interested also 